Welcome to Unfold Data Science. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. I'll just take 30 seconds of your time before moving to the main video. So guys, you will notice that Unfold Data Science topics are different from rest of the channels. You won't find lot of fancy and catchy thumbnails such as how to earn 50 lakhs in a year, how to earn 1 crore in a year, how to go from this point to that point. I don't cover those topics. I am interested in covering what will help you in a sustainable and long term growth. And that is where these topics come into picture. In this video, I am going to cover something known as vector databases. Let's understand what are vector databases, how they work and few details about it. Okay. Here are the topics for this video guys. First, we are going to see why learn vector databases. Then we are going to see the differences between traditional RDBMS and vector databases. Then we are going to understand what actually is vector database. Then I'm going to give you a setup through which you can practice vector database free of cost. So normally there are companies providing vector databases and they will charge you if you want to practice. So how to do that free of cost. OK, that I'm going to tell you and then I'm going to leave you with some references where you can learn more, practice more, etc. OK, so let's move ahead and try to understand what is basically uh, why we are learning vector DB, the very first topic. So guys, with the advancement in AI and ML, right, with the advancement in AI and ML and with new uh, new is AI, uh, you can say models or you can say methods or you can say techniques such as LLM, such as prompt engineering, such as Gen AI, right? What is happening is we need fast response in all the aspects of AI. OK, we cannot afford to have a slow response. Suppose you go to chat GPT window and you write a question here and then chat GPT takes like 10 minutes to give you response. That's not acceptable, right? So one uh, one need of the hour in the world of uh, AI ML is fast response. OK, another need of the hour is how do you store? How do you store? huge volume of data and how do you process it? So I'm going to write here storage, storage of huge data. Huge data, when I say, you can think in both terms, in terms of volume and in terms of variety both. Okay, so I want to store audio, video, whatnot, right? Images, and I want to store more of it because more and more I store, more and more my model is going to be rich. Okay, so uh, these are the key things that is needed in the new world of AI. On top of this, you want something which is fault tolerant because you want to run multiple systems. You want to do multiple operations together. So fault tolerant systems is what you need. Your vector DB support all these things very, very well. OK, your vector DB normally support all these things very, very well. That is the reason vector DB. Um, there is a very good Gartner prediction that almost 30% of the organizations will use vector DB in some or other form by 2026, I believe. OK, so uh, this is the prediction. I mean, uh, the vector DB is gaining momentum and that is what is going to happen. Now, um, if I move to the second point, because if we understand the difference between traditional RDBMS and vector DB, it will be very easy for us to visualize what is vector DB. So first of all, I will write here uh, some of the key points on which I will compare these two. First of all, made for, OK, made for or I will say purpose. OK. Second of all, I will say uh, data storage. I mean, how data is stored in both these platforms. Third point, I will say indexing, how the indexing happens in both these. I mean to say I will compare vector DB with uh, traditional RDBMA systems. OK, then I'm going to see how the query happens in both these systems. OK, indexing and querying you can think of. Then I'm going to write here. Uh, I will add more points, but first let us uh, discuss these important things. OK, I will write here RDBMS. And I will write here vector DB. Please keep this in mind, guys, and you will not forget. That is the reason I'm creating this table. Remember, uh, made for or purpose of normally RDBMS is 
enabling the transactions data or transactions or storage of transactions okay so i will write here transactional so normally your rdbms systems are made for transactional data storage and processing and normally your vector db are purpose towards or made for your ai ml applications high end ai ml models okay the data storage in rdbms will happen in the form of row and columns okay row and columns you already know this data storage in vector db will happen in the form of vectors we will go to how these vectors are created indexing this is pretty interesting here indexing in normal typically rdbms systems to make your query faster right you would have heard of something known as creating indexes right so this is a way a very famous way of uh, making your queries faster or doing the indexing right however there are different different methods in vector db to do this indexing because here we are talking about huge huge volume of data right so what are these different different methods so i will write here some methods and i i will write here and i'll tell you what these are so for example there is a indexing method called called hashing okay another indexing method called quantization okay quantization these keywords you should remember okay hashing quantization these are the things through which you do indexing i'll explain what are these in a moment okay then when you do query right how you query in, in traditional rdbms um, i mean how the query will run internally or how the execution will happen internally you write something called uh, select star from where group by etc right so it's a sequence of event sequence of um, you can say uh, there is a tree you can see how the query happens in the background right so i will say sql querying through sql and here querying will happen through um, matching techniques so matching techniques in the sense as you already know right some kind of cosine similarity or some kind of um let's say euclidean distance i will say some kind of distance metric okay not limited to these two but some kind of distance metric from these discussions right um, is there any other difference that i have noted okay we are good for now so just understand what for what these purposes are uh, for what these different dbs are created what is their purpose how the query happens differently how the indexing happens differently okay now let us understand what are vector dbs basically so if you know something known as embeddings then it's very easy for you to understand what is vector database i i'm sure most of you know what is embedding embedding is nothing but a vector representation of a word a sentence or any input any input data right for example the famous example right here i say king king will have its own vector right here i say queen queen will have own vector right and these vectors will have some values so this is basically a one kind of embedding now we have different videos on unfold data science explaining what are embeddings but to keep it very simple and crisp it's basically a vector representation of your sentence or word you can think like that now the same concept if you apply to vector databases okay same concept so let's assume that let's assume that this is image of let's assume that this is image of car okay and this is image of a this is image of a let's say uh, bike okay so can i have a vector representation of both these just a simple vector representation try to understand and here i will just add some features for example uh, four wheels okay is one feature another feature can be on road means does it run on road another feature can be self driven maybe self driven capabilities or is there or not not there so uh, image of a car so that's basically an image but the information we are extracting from that is four wheels so out of one let's say 0.9 is the is the marks it is getting on four wheels image of a bike let's say 0.1 it is getting on four wheels on road this is getting 0.8 this is also getting 0.9 or something self driven this is getting 0.9 this is getting 0.2 so this becomes one vector 
for image of the car and this becomes another vector for image of the bike. Now, in a n-dimensional vector space, let's say here it's three dimensions. In a n-dimensional vector space, imagine, imagine you have a n-dimensional vector space, okay? So, somewhere car will come here and somewhere, let's say, circle bike will come here, okay? Now here we are talking about two objects and three dimensions. You can imagine millions of objects and billions of dimensions. In that case, what will happen is your, your database will start getting really, really complex. And that is where you need a good storage strategy and a good querying strategy, okay? So that is what I was explaining to you here. Good storage strategy. Good storage strategy means how do you store it properly so that when you query, um, you get the results faster. So for example, if tomorrow I run a query, then the results should be um, quick. So hashing is one technique. What happens in hashing is basically similar kind of, uh, you can think of um, inside the database, buckets are created for similar kind of objects. So let's say this is your larger database. In this database, let's imagine internal, internally there are three virtual buckets. So maybe B1, B2, and B3, okay? So when a new user comes, when a new query comes, right, it need not go to all those millions of vectors. Rather, it can go to one of the bucket, which is kind of closer to the input. Okay, so it need not go to all the buckets. So this is at high level what hashing is. Similarly, I was talking about quantization. Quantization is basically uh, creating a code of your vector. So suppose this is a vector in front of you. This is a vector. So convert this vector into a code. Okay, and then that code will be used for the search. That code will be used for the matching. That is basically quantization. So these are different techniques of indexing your uh, vector databases for faster retrieval. These are distance matrices, simple uh, things to understand. But again, there are there are techniques to improve the performance of your database. Now comes uh, which embedding technique or which embedding method we will use when we use the vector databases. So basically, um, it's not fixed to one. So maybe this is, uh, I will say embedding model. You can say embedding model as simple as this embedding model and this is your let's say input let's say this is your input sentence or input word so input word plus embedding model both these things will go and prepare a vector and prepare a vector okay and this vector gets stored in your vector databases Tomorrow when a new query comes, this embedding model will be used, the same model, and then the queries will be uh, made and um, you know data will be fetched, retrieved, etc. What are the some, some important use cases uh, for vector databases? So one important use case is, as I was giving you uh, some, some hint, recommendation engines, okay, recommendation engines, because you need to compare product properties, etc. Then some kind of semantic search, semantic search, okay. Some kind of, uh, let's say, um, advanced chatbots, okay, advanced chatbots. Everywhere where you can think of uh, huge volume of data and you can think of searching and um, you know, matching those kind of use cases, vector databases can be mostly used, okay? And um, another another uh, conversational AI, that is basically advanced chatbots and conversational AI, you can think like that. Um, context match, semantic search, so context match is another huge case in different, different, uh, different different flavors you can use it context match so these are the uh, what to say uh, different use cases okay now if you are interested in practicing this you will need some setup because uh, basically it can't be done in your laptop you have to install and pay some money and then only uh, the setup can be done but basically I'm going to give you a link and tell you three things that you need for practice just three things, nothing much. 
open ai account which you already have i think open ai account which you already have which means you have the api key second is a free postman account okay free postman account okay and third is i am going to show you the vector db which if you if now this video video is not sponsored by anyone but if you create uh, account there you will get some free credits through which you can practice okay at this point i want to say a special thank you to to the person who wrote this lovely article from where i have taken the reference for most of this video so this is the article guys i'll give you the link uh, vector databases practice okay and a big thank you to mr pavan Belagati. Okay, I'll give you the link and many things that I have explained you comes from here. But what I want to show you is there is something called a single store. Single store, store is the platform which will give you free credit for practice. And if you just follow this article, right, you will be very well able to, uh, you know, create a simple vector DB and practice it. There is nothing um, difficult here. That's the reason I'm not doing it hands on. Nothing difficult here. If you do it, you will be able to do it. I'll give you this link. If you want to learn a little more, go to AWS page and search for vector databases and you will see AWS different offerings in this world, in vector databases world. Okay. So I thought this was a decent introduction for vector databases, guys. Based on your interest, I can dig deeper if you want. And as you know, more and more keywords you add in your resume, more and more topics you know. It's always beneficial for you. Okay. So I was saying three things. The third thing is nothing but this single store. Uh, let me go here and write. So if you have these three things, that is what is written in that article also, you'll be able to practice. Okay. So I'll leave you there. If you want to practice on this, if you have any questions, drop me. See you all in the next video, guys. Wherever you are, stay safe and take care.